me Bonnie Burns and welcome to the Superhero Dog Owners Show. <laughs> it's not a new Very thing. Very showbiz. This <laughs> week. It's a new thing that uh, I won't be doing anymore. All right? um, <laughs> Just like that last thing that you said you wouldn't ever do. <laughs> and I haven't since. Again. No, that's true. <laughs> uh, welcome everybody. My name's Dom Hodgson. I'm your host. I'm a dog trainer. And I'm the author of the best-selling How to Be a Dog Superhero book. I'm joined by my very good friend and producer of the show, Alex, the video guy. Hello, everyone. Welcome to th- welcome to the van, Alex, again. Thank you. Which you have set up, as you usually do, in this expert manner. We're all technically kitted out. We are lit. We have several things recording. It's a studio. It's it is. Not a it's van. just it's van, a studio. studio in a van. The yeah. first podcast in a van. So we're... So we're let to believe We've anyway. yet to find one, so I'll take that. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. So you are you seem to be I mean your kind of your profession demands you be quite technically savvy, I suppose, doesn't yes, it? Yes, yeah, I would um, I would agree with that. So is that a chore for you or are you quite a gadgety type of guy or what would you say? <laughs> I th- I think I am a bit of a gadgety type of guy, which of course just means I'm a massive nerd. Massive yeah, geek, yeah. if you couldn't tell. Um no, it it, it is. I think um it's one of them things that that I'm guilty of as well. You can very easily get sort of sucked up into the world of like chasing the equipment and like the new gear that comes out and the updates and stuff, and you can kind of let it suck you up. Do you know what I mean? And and, and in doing that, you kind of take your eye off the ball, the original thing, which is the filmmaking, the video yeah, producing. Yeah, yeah. But that being said, I, I do I do enjoy having cool gadgets and stuff. Yeah. Mm, okay. Sure. So what kind of cool gadget have you? Had any bought any invested in any cool gadgets of late? Uh, well, just being Christmas and over Christmas we got ourselves. Me and Naomi got two of those Amazon dots. Ah, well, Beth's been talking about these. Tell me a bit yeah. more about these. Other voice recognition devices might be available. I don't know. Probably not. Actually, <laughs> um, it's quite cool. Will be soon. Yeah, there will be. Yeah, um, it's quite cool. It's just this tiny little speaker mm-hmm. you plug in somewhere in your house, connects to your Wi-Fi, and if you're in the room, if you're in the vicinity you can just say, Alexa, play my music, or remind me to buy eggs, or set a timer for 20 minutes, and she'll do it, just like that. And uh-huh. you can plug her into other speakers, and she can Bluetooth to other speakers as well, so you can play your music through it. Um, there's always kind of new apps being added to it as well. Uh-huh. So there's like a Jamie Oliver one, so you could say, oh, give me a Jamie Oliver recipe, and she'll read that out to you. Uh-huh. It's very sort of hands-free. Uh, the more stuff you have in your house that is connected, you know, yeah. like lights and central heating and stuff, the better it gets, obviously. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, we don't have that much stuff that is, so at the minute it's just kind of a posh, hands-free speaker, <laughs> if anything, uh, for music and stuff. But it's it's quite a cool bit. Yeah, it's clever, nice clever, it. clever. I like it. I like the sound it's of that, It's an expensive actually. timer. <laughs> That's the other yeah. way of looking at it. Yeah, yeah. You know I mean? Sounds like it, yeah. But it's cool. I like it. Yeah, but um, it's a good way for them to, you know, sucker you in almost, and so you, you end up... You, you know, yeah. if you like it, which you obviously do, in time you'll obviously buy more stuff, won't you? Exactly. That, that connects to it. And, yeah, uh, it is and very... a lot of it will make your life easier, which is oh, a good Of course, yeah. yeah. I mean, you can order stuff from Amazon directly from it and stuff. You yeah. know, obviously, you know, add this to my wish list or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Which you would expect. And I mean, like you say, it's it, it's very Amazon focused, but that's fine with me because it works. You know, it's Definitely. it's it's easy. It's Definitely, it's convenient. Yeah. And as a little aside, can you think of anything off the top of your head you might want to add to an Amazon wish list? What, like like a book or something. Yeah. Like no, no. Best can't think of book. anything. No, not, not the one. Yeah. <laughs> Ask me later. <laughs> How to be a dog superhero available from Amazon, Audible, or from my website www.mydogsuperhero.com. Um, <laughs> I'll put all the titles in really quickly there <laughs> for everyone to go to. But, but no, interesting talking about the gadgets because uh, we get similar to what you said with the. With you know you can be chasing the, the latest gadget and stuff. Sim- similar things happen with dog training as well, right? Because you, you know you can get you can get wrapped up thinking that you need to have a a clicker to help you to teach your dog to walk to heel, mm-hmm. or you need to have a whistle to help you to do a, a recall. And you know those things can help without a doubt, you know. But they they don't that you know they're not going to guarantee your success, and and you don't necessarily need them I wouldn't say you know you're quite capable of teaching your dog to do a recall or to walk to heel just by using some toys and some treats that you know that he likes <laughs> and a lead you know to stop him from running away yeah. and your voice you know your voice and it is can be way more effective than a than a clicker and because it's you know you're, you're getting like an emotional connection with your dog you know and yeah. and the more you talk to your dog the more your dog gonna enjoy it um most dogs are that 
speak to mm-hmm. <laughs> most dogs that are that are trained and my, my clients train here's another thought actually Come i've on. been watching this show on netflix called cosmos okay by uh, it's presented by neil degrasse tyson and it's all about like the universe and science yeah. and stuff it's very sort of dumbed down it's very visual mm-hmm. and the one the other day was about evolution and mm-hmm. stuff and natural selection and obviously dogs are the complete opposite of natural selection oh. because we've unnatural selection yes we've totally Turn I mean, them from man-made product. Ex- yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. From from wolves and uh, Jack Russells and mm. Shih Tzus. And yeah, stuff. yeah. Um, and I suppose if you think of it in terms of, you know, we, we haven't always had clickers, have we? Nope, Do you know no, what I mean? No, we no, didn't no, have no. clickers in the Stone Age. Mm-hmm. They're not, not. There's anything wrong with them? No, no, definitely but not. But no. you could argue that it is more of a sort of traditional. I don't know. You're kind of almost like you know going back to the roots of, you know, how did the cavemen speak to Yep. to dogs when they first started domesticating them mm-hmm. it was voice and stuff yeah, obviously yeah. you know what i mean yeah, and using yeah, scraps of food and stuff yeah definitely yeah. No, i think that's a really good point yeah excellent i, mm-hmm. I, I like that a lot and it, you know backs up what i'm saying you know which is that you you know you don't you don't need anything you know you might need to know a a, a method of teaching and you might you need to know that your dog is uh, you know how dogs learn, you know what I mean? You need to know that dogs learn through good things happening to them, you know, and the more good things happen, the more likely they're going to be able to do something. Um, but you can control the good things that your dog likes, the toys and the treats that he likes. Um, and buying my book will be a great way for you to find out how dogs learn and how you can easily teach your dog using the things that he likes as well. And carrying on from the gadget conversation, there are some things that many dog owners use that don't help them in the slightest with their dog. Yeah, we still use them, you know. I'm thinking specifically at the moment of flexi leads. Right. Um, I, you know, we had an incident a couple of weeks ago where me and Beth were walking through the village, and a lady was walking with a dog and a flexi lead in front, and she just relaxed, and she must have relaxed and forgotten to push the button or something, and the dog just wandered out across the road on this flexi lead, and um, <clears throat> and the car had to brake and stuff, and it was like hearts in the mouth moment, mm. but. You know, there's loads. I did a Facebook post about this the other day and, and loads of people had commented saying that, you know, their dogs have suffered with like lacerations on their legs and friction burns, you know, f- humans getting friction burns on their arms. Oh, and honestly, yeah. I've it was so before. dangerous, you know. And um, so, and but that's something where you, you know, you get it thinking that you're going to give your dog a bit more exercise, which is fair enough. I know you're, you're worried about your dog running away from you. It was much easier to, to teach your dog to play with you at the park and then he can have a little bit of off-leash time and then the on-leash time is the, the time that he has to walk beside yeah. you, know, and much dogs, safer. most dogs are no, yeah, it's much safer. Most dogs are no, they respond really well to that kind of structure. Mm-hmm. So, um, so another guy, as somebody else who, who isn't a big fan of flexi leads either, <laughs> is uh, our guest this week and he is the Glasgow dog trainer, uh, John McGuigan. Awesome. There's a lot of stuff on social media, John. I'm not going to talk much more about it now because I'm going to do a little intro, you'll see, before the interview that, that we're going to show you now. But this is a really cool interview with the Glasgow Dog Trainer. So, Alex, could you please press play? Play. <laughs> okay, my guest today is a dog trainer and behaviourist from Glasgow, across the border, where he, uh, he helps dog owners and puppy owners uh, with, with their training. He does new dog consultations and also more difficult issues such as aggression, separation anxiety. Uh, I first became aware of uh, of my guest when I I saw a video that a mutual dog training friend posted on on Facebook uh, featuring John. And, uh, you know, he he talks, makes dog training very, very easy to understand, I think. And, yeah, so I was I was really keen to get him on the show. So we'll we'll say hello to John. Hello, John McGuigan. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good, thanks. Yourself? Brilliant, yeah, really good, John. Thank you. Thanks for your time today as well. Um, no John, we're going to dive straight in with the Greyhound round, all right? This is a quick okay. fire round for anybody who doesn't know you very well. I don't know you very well, so this is going to be interesting for me as well. Um, so are you ready to go off the leash? Sure. Brilliant. Um, your favourite superhero? Uh, Wolverine, probably. <laughs> good one, good one. Yeah, with the beard, I can see that, yeah. Um, <laughs> do you prefer Indian or Chinese food? Chinese every time. <laughs> and would you prefer to walk a pug in the park or a Vimarana in the woods? Yeah, Vimarana in the woods, I would say, I think. <laughs> uh, red or white wine? I don't drink wine. Okay. Tea or coffee? Tea, always. <laughs> um, what's your favourite uh, dog cartoon character? Oh, uh... Scooby-Doo is the only one that immediately springs to mind, but I actually can't think of any other ones. So <laughs> no, that's Scooby good. Too. Scooby's good. We haven't had anybody say Scooby, I don't think, so we'll, we'll take him. All right, that's, that's good, John. I'll, I'll give you 8 out of 10 for those answers. Well done. 
<laughs> what have you um tell me i know you we've managed to squeeze an interview in today tell me about what you've been up to today with some of your some of your clients uh, so I had a reg two regulars, um, both of whom come to the workshops that uh, I run as well, the Positively Excellent Dog Trainer Trainers workshops that we started in January. So um, Andy and Dave, Dave's a Border Collie, who's just over a year, and Aileen and Charlie, and Charlie's a two or three year old um, rescue from Romania or Spain, one mm -hmm. of the two. Um, but we're working a lot of uh, connection, so kind of... The dog being with us at the park, um, and we worked on that. And then I had uh, another regular um, client with. She's got two big dogs, and um, we worked on that aspect as well. But there's other things going on with her dogs as well. But we worked on that to deal with her. Okay. So do you get a lot of that with a connection where people are struggling on the walks? Uh, yeah, and I think it's actually the more that I, the more that I look at it, and the more that I train it, the more that I see it's it's the a big solution to a lot of the problems that we have. Hmm. Definitely, yeah. I mean, the, I think everybody gets a dog, don't they? Because they, you know, they, they want it, they, they think a dog's going to complete the family and, you know, they want to enjoy the outdoors more with their dog, but it, it often ends up becoming the thing that they hate doing, <laughs> you know, they hate taking the dog out, don't they? Because yeah. it, it becomes, yeah. you know, it's either very reactive or, you know, pulling on the lead and all that kind of thing. And it's such a shame, isn't it? it it's a great thing that you can do if you can help someone to, Absolutely. To enjoy yeah. the walk a bit more. Yeah, it's supposed to be a pleasure. Every relationship they have in our life is supposed to be a pleasure. Supposed to be, you know. <laughs> um, but we are the ones with the big brains, so we are the ones that are supposed to try and figure it out. Yeah, definitely, yeah. I like that. I like that. Let's Before we start talking about um, what, what you're up to at the minute, John, what, um, what, what was your experience of growing up with dogs when you were a, a wee boy growing up in Glasgow? I didn't have any. I didn't have my first dog was when I got married in two thousand, um, and it was my wife, my ex-wife's dog. But um, she had a wee collie um, who's very similar to Watson, um, very mm -hmm. similar to her, and that was my first dog that I had. Uh, and but we didn't have we didn't have dogs growing up. When no, we were me children. neither. I didn't either actually. No, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. And then I got um, after that we got Bosco, who was a Bordeaux that I used to have. Uh, and then we got Kitty. Short time afterwards, she was a Neapolitan. Mm -hmm. So you like your mastiffs, eh? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah good um, stuff. And then after Kitty, Kitty died five years ago, and I was four years without a dog. Mm -hmm. Um, between working full time and my, my last job and doing my dog training, so I was just I wasn't I was never in the house. Yeah. So I didn't have a dog for four years until I got Watson last year. Uh huh. Uh huh. And so when did you? Uh what was the moment when you went from being, you know, just a dog owner, dog lover, to wanting to become a dog trainer, or being it, a dog trainer? It kind of happened fairly gradually. It was I used to use very old school, um, dominance based, aversive training um, techniques on my old dogs on Bosco and Kitty, um, and have first hand experience of the fallout that we get from that. Hmm. Uh, the I went to. Uh, um, behaviourist in Glasgow and she kind of helped me along a little bit, put me on the right, the right lines and I just started reading more about it. Mm. The more I started reading, the more I started training my own dogs, then people at work would ask me for help and then it would be their friends and their family would be referred to and it just kind of, I had no idea when I started doing this that I would be in the position that I am just now. <laughs> yeah. um, I thought it would be something that I would kind of potter away with until I was ready to retire um, and... And I did. I'd retired from my previous job at fifty-four, uh, so it, it's not retire or retired age. Hmm. Um, and uh, it was something that I would probably, at the time when I started, I was thinking I'll just keep this going for the next twenty or so years, and then just do it as a kind of hobby in hmm. order to earn some mm -hmm. a little bit extra cash. But I had no idea that it would be what it is today. You know, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Yeah, so, it is indeed. Yeah, 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 it's nice. We never know where life's going to take us, do we? And uh, yeah, no, it's nice when it throws up a a career working with dogs has certainly been a, an, an eye-opener for me and, uh, you know, really, really enjoyable. What are the, so what are the most kind of common problems that you, you come across in your day-to-day your -day behavioural training work? Is there a most common problem? Um, I think if I, was to, if I was to put it down to kind of bare bones, it's people take, not taking into consideration what their dog needs, expecting their dog to fit in this with, with their lives and not giving the dog what they need in order to do that. Mm. And I think uh, if I was... I think that lies at the, the 
the foundation of so many problems, yeah. whether it's loose lead walking, recall, reactivity, destructive behaviour in the house, hmm. um, nervousness in the car, uh, you know, shyness over strangers. Yeah. Uh, I think it's just not taken into... I, I, I'm trying to think of an example that it's actually not the case. So I need to think of something, because I don't think it would be a 100%, but I think that's at the hmm. that's the foundation for the vast majority of the problems that we have, that we don't take the dog's needs into consideration enough. Mm-hmm. And do, they, do you think it's just because they don't know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree yeah. with that. Yeah, definitely. It's uh, There are very few people who, when you when you tell them, you know, not because we have any kind of wisdom, just because we have a bit more experience. Yeah, and when you yeah. tell them what they, you know, what, what, what the dog needs and what they can do to make their lives a bit easier, they just, they're quite yeah. happy to do it, aren't they? You know? Yeah. Um, and I think it's, the, the, I, I think it's Maya Angelou that said it, um, I might be wrong, but, and I'm paraphrasing here, but it says, we do the best that we can and we know better, we do better. You know, mm-hmm. I, I think the vast majority of people are out there interacting with their dogs in the best way that they know how yeah yeah uh, and it's just but that's about us educating people um, mm-hmm. and making people less ignorant um yeah. and ignorance is not a bad word it's just that they just don't have knowledge no no you know? no no yeah um, you don't know what you don't know do you we yeah five ten years ago you know yeah definitely yeah i was i was the same i've been there too um we talked before about about uh walking the dogs you know and how people struggling on on, on a, struggling to enjoy the dog's walk, you know, and it's such a big part of, of why many people got a dog, you know, so they could exercise yeah. them a bit more. Can you give me, I like people to go away with some kind of practical things that they can put into place if they can, if it's safe for them to do so with their own dog. So can you give me maybe like three things you could recommend dog owners can do today that would help them have more control and enjoy their walks more? Uh, absolutely slow down, slow down, just slow down and when you think that you're slow slow that down again um and then slow down more uh the example i always give is is to uh, if you ever watch two cops walking a beat mm. and the pace that they walk at they're not going anywhere yeah they're out for a walk because they've only got so much beat to cover in their eight hours mm. you know um but they're not actually going anywhere they're just out for a walk effectively and mm. um, it's that pace that i think that we need to walk our dogs at more often than not um, and it gives the dog time to use their nose and explore. Um, if you were to do a walk like that for 45 minutes, your dog would be completely comatose most of the time when they mm. come back in because they've had all that stimulation. It allows us to slow the dog's body down as well and actually get them the thinking part of their brain activating rather than the one that re- the part of the brain that just reacts. Yeah. Um, so slowing down first, um, be present um would be the second and i know these are kind of woolly slightly <laughs> abstract but no, no, I, um, I could say that, be yeah. present so put your phone away don't put your ipod it's time for you to be out there with your dog mm. um we bring our dog into our life in order to enhance our lives but that means that we need to enhance their lives as well so be present with your dog um and the third thing i would probably say is um and when you notice good behavior that uh, which happens all the time acknowledge it and reinforce mm. it and whether that's with a scratch in the ear or, or the hips or um, a rubber of his, uh, of his chest or giving him a, a treat or something like that or just letting the walk continue mm. those are the three th- things that I think that people if we did that from the start that were I think most owners are desperate to get their dog out to get exercised and they think that it's the amount of running around that the dog does um, but that's not in a dog's ethology they don't run around all the time no. you know I hear what you're saying. I, I agree with it totally. Yeah, I mean, I remind myself to slow down sometimes as well. But there, it, it's it's like kind of getting to the park, isn't it? You know, they want to get to the park, get the dog exercise, and get back. And yeah. so the dog's anxious to get there. And then when he gets there, he yeah. you know, he's interested in everything else except the owner, isn't he? Yeah. Often, yeah. you're not always, but often, yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah. Yeah. especially other dogs and things like that. Um, you had you, you had an interest in. Uh, interesting video john i saw about the flexi lead yeah yeah tell us t- t- tell us your thoughts about the not, not often something that i mentioned very much is the pra- really practical stuff like like the leads that people should use you know that can make their lives easier and uh, you know help them to connect more with their dog so tell me a bit about the the, the flexi and uh and, and your thoughts on that um i hate as you see i hate them <laughs> right i think that they have a limited they have limited use for management um, they have extremely limited practical applications for some training. Um, the, I was speaking to a couple of 
of my colleagues and they were saying that they use them for some aspects of kind of the dressage or he worked in music. Mm. That's a really, really limited specialist application of a mm. training tool, you know, um, and that that's fine if that's what they want, you know, but that's not what I'm teaching and that's not what most pet, most pet owners are teaching. Um, I think it's an illusion of control. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that they, they offer you any control. The dog doesn't know how much lead that they have and it's not teaching your dog to be off lead because the way that the the spring is loaded and the dog constantly feels pressure on his, his or her collar. Um, and the last thing about it is that the in teaching a connection between you and your dog, you have to be very aware of your body language. And because it's this pistol grip that we hold like right. this, the way that our bodies work, as soon as you hold something in your hand like this, you activate a whole bunch of muscles in your body that are counterproductive to connective walk, connected right. walking hmm. with your dog, you know. Um, and these are habitual behaviours that we have done our entire lives. Hmm. Uh, grabbing a door handle and pulling it, you know, picking up a cup and uh, yeah. you know, it's just anytime you're holding that, you yeah. will pull near enough, always pull it towards you. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. That's not what we, in my experience, that's not what we need to be doing when we're teaching our dogs to walk with us when we're out. Yeah. That's why, that's a, a brief summary of... Yeah, no, no, I like that a lot. Yeah, I like that a lot. they I, I think they're awful as well. I, I, I've, I've never, you know, I've never used one for many a year, and I certainly discourage people from using them. I think it, uh, they're just not safe at the end of the day as well. Are they? You know, yeah. really, the, the amount of times that you see people get themselves in a situation with the, with the flexi, yeah. or, you know, I haven't had it happen to anybody I know, but accidents and stuff as well. You know what I mean with the burns, friction burns, stuff. Yeah. Awful things, awful things. Anyway, so yeah, great advice, great advice, John. Thanks for that. Um, we're coming to the end of the end of the interview now, John. What, what's uh, what's the best bit of advice you've ever been given, dog related or, or anything else? I know I, for, when I seen Ian Dunbar at, at seminars, and he was saying that the um, that this goes for just any relationship that we're in. It's supposed to enhance our lives. So why would you bring an individual into your life that you don't want to spend time with? Hmm. And whether that's your children, your spouse, your friends, your dog. You know, so uh, being, again, mindful of that, hmm. that we, we have relationships and they have to, they're supposed to enhance our lives. And if they're not enhancing our lives, then it's time for us to go, hmm. you know. Um, but I think, uh, I, I think that's a, it's, it's pretty sound advice to, and we can apply yeah. it to lots of different stuff. And that's not just to do with your dogs. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. And is that something that you, uh, how 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 do you, how do you find that when when you're sort of teaching that message do you do you, do your clients did they get it quickly do you know do they did they start to see the, the relationship differently do you think or I think most of them do with the way that I've like, most people who will come to me know the style of training that I do yeah um, so and that's through the information that's on my website that I put out through my Facebook and my social media and um, so I get a lot of people that are coming to me because they've already. They already want to train their dog that way. Yes. And when I say to them, yeah, I know that you don't want to put a metal collar in your dog to correct him, but um, still saying no to him and maybe squirting him in the face with a water pistol, that's still along that, you know, yeah. um, spectrum, if hmm. you like. Uh, and your dog's your pal, you know, yeah. so you wouldn't do it to your friends. No, no. You know? So, yeah. and the thing is, our dogs are captive, yeah. regardless of what anybody says. She's stuck with me. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've got a front door and she's on a lead with me. She's got nowhere to go. Hmm. Uh, she is a captive in my house. And uh, so I have to look after her. Yeah, yeah, definitely, you know? yeah. No, I like that. I think you're right. I think uh, a lot of that, what you're saying is about the clients coming to you so they know you're, kind of, you're showing them by example, aren't you? What the, and yeah, then they, yeah. they, they, hopefully they look at you, hopefully. they look at what you're doing on Facebook and with your other clients and they, they'll say, you know, that's the kind of relationship that I want with my dog. Do you know what I mean? And, and that's what that's what yeah. brings them in. So that's brilliant. Yeah. No, that's fantastic. Um, John, where can people go to find out more about you and, and what you're up to? Uh, so my website, GlasgowDogTrainer.co.uk, which I'm in the process if I've heard it around to it of revamping. <laughs> um, my Facebook again, Glasgow Dog Trainer and Behaviour Consultant. Um, I'm on WordPress as well, uh, YouTube, mm -hmm. and. Uh, Twitter, but I'm not very active on that. <laughs> no, 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 but um, I'll put all those links uh, in the in the show notes as well, so people can check you out and check out the yeah, videos that you do. Like the, I said, the social media buttons are available through my website. If you go to my website, they're on the homepage, you can, and you can get there. all the stuff. 
Awesome, awesome. Yeah. I'll also put a link on for the video for the Flexi Lead as well, so people can check okay. that out. <laughs> Great, thank you. <laughs> so when you're not um, when you're not making videos or and helping out, you know, p people in your area with their dogs, how, how does John how does John like to chill out and relax? Um, the I, I like reading. I read a lot, mm -hmm. um, and I do. I've been doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for a long time, uh, and I've kind of fallen away from it for. The last few months because I've been injured, but I'm trying to get back into that as well. So, and that's what it, um, it's great because you you absolutely need to be present when you're doing that because you get killed if you don't. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you have to concentrate. So it, it's an hour or two hours out of my week where I can go in and I I have to only think about that. I can't yeah. be anywhere else, um, which is good, switch good for your else. head. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Yeah. So, good life lessons through the jiu jitsu. Excellent. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, thanks very much for your time, John. I really, really well, appreciate pleasure. it. And I'm Thank sure you. everyone watching will get a lot of value from, from what you've had to, to share with us today. Awesome. So thanks again. Take care of yourself. You're welcome. Thank you. Cheers. So, Alex, how awesome was that? Awesome. It was awesome. <laughs> really good. <laughs> really enjoyed speaking to John. He's somebody I've, I've watched quite a bit on, you know, his posts on social media. And uh, he's always talked a lot of sense. He talks a lot to do sort of dog trainers as well, helping dog trainers out, you know, and what, the, what he thinks they should be doing. Um, and yeah, re really cool guy, really knowledgeable, yeah. um, and somebody I would I would like to maybe we'll have a, a road trip up to Scotland sometime and uh, cool. meet yeah. some Scottish dog trainers. That would be That'd cool, be wouldn't awesome. it? Um, so so that's it for this week. Um, if you haven't already, please go and buy a copy of my book, How to Be a Dog Superhero. If you would like a free copy of the book, then you need to join my inner circle. So when you join my inner circle, you get a five thousand word copy of my canine coaching chronicle you get this once a month and in this we go into we go deep into one particular aspect of dog training um next month we're talking about pulling on the lead i'm going to be giving away my three-step strategy to pull on the lead so if you've got a dog who pulls on the lead you need to you need to get in the inner circle you get access to a load of how-to videos online as well and we have a private facebook group where you can interact with all the other superhero dog owners in there and you can ask me any questions and it's just generally it's like a little family in there it's absolutely wonderful people are progressing brilliantly with their dogs but you also get a welcome pack when you join i'll send you a free book um a free dvd some audio training and yeah it's fantastic value for money just just over a pound a day i think it works out as so you can stay as long as you like you can leave whenever you like most people don't leave most people stay but uh you know, there's no sort of minimum tie-in. You can just stay for until you fix your dog's problem. Um, yeah, and, and that's it, really. So, so get yourself, get yourself in the inner circle. www.mydogsuperhero.com forward slash inner circle. And that'll take you there, and you can get signed up um, today. Awesome. You should indeed. So next week, Alex, we're going to have a break from the interviews. I've enjoyed chatting to you today for a change. <laughs> <laughs> so we've had enough now, we're now. <laughs> no it's been good crack so i think next week we'll, we might have just a bit more crack again me and you yeah yeah I, I had an interesting phone call um from a chap who was having problems with his springer okay. and uh so maybe we'll talk through that and the advice that i gave him mm. and some people at home might be able to, might be able to use that advice yeah, as well definitely. That sounds good to me. so thank you for watching thank you alex no problem and if we don't see you through the week we'll see you through the window mm.